Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Thanks a lot for 300 subscribers and it's a great feeling to have the support that you have been giving me. Yes, you, the one who is watching right now. I thank you for the support. Your comments and likes motivate me to make new videos and come back stronger than before. So this is a new day and let's start off with something which is very close to our applications and that's none other than our very own AWS RDS which is our AWS Relational Database Service. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. But wait, there is something that I want all of you to keep in mind that the current exam that is SAAC01 is going to be obsolete post March 22 this year 2020. By obsolete, it doesn't mean your certifications won't have any value. It'll still hold for two years, but there will be a new pattern for the exam after March 22 this year. So if you wish to give your exams before that, you still have a lot of time. Don't worry, we will cover the differences and the lessons to come. So if you haven't subscribed already, please do it right now. So let's begin. So let's talk databases. So everyone has used a database before, I hope, isn't it? And if you haven't, don't be taken back by this. I'm sorry if I'm digging into things too deep, but let's talk about this. So a database is a data structure that uh, stores organized information. Let's suppose you have a phone book and you store names and numbers in your phone book, right? So if that is also a type of data that you store and the place that you store it can either be a file or Excel sheet or a database so in your phone database once you have stored your contact information like name number email address you will get the capability of either reading the contacts or editing or updating it or if you wish to then you can delete them as well and these data are stored in as what we call as tables isn't it so the operations that we spoke about these form the basic crud operations and a database is an entity that has these abilities. So as I've already mentioned, the write, read, edit, and delete, where write is basically your create operation, read is obviously your read operation, edit, that you edit the information that you have in hand, is called the update, and delete sounds similar to delete as well in the CRUD. So the basic CRUD operations form the four major pillars of the operations that we perform for a database. So create, read, update, and delete. And the concept which is really important here is a relational database. So a relational database is a database based on the relational model of data. For example, if you're working in an organization and you want to store employee information, there can be multiple tables related to it. For example, let's suppose we have two tables, one for employee where we store the information like name and ID and the other one that we have for the department and where we are storing like the ID and the department itself, then we have a relation between both the tables as we can see that the common entity that we have in both the tables is ID, which creates a relation between both the tables. And as we can say it rightly, a relational database is a type of database that stores and provides access to data points that are related to one another. Our data point here is ID. And in our relational database, we can deduce or read John uh, with ID 123 is from physics department because there is a relation between both the tables. So if you write a query based on this uh, selection, then you can read the data as per your requirements. I hope this was a simple explanation of what database and relationship means. And generally, you might set up your database like MS SQL or Postgres or MySQL on a server or a local machine. And you need to install all the things that you need, isn't it? But what if I say there is a service which can take all the headache of setting things and managing the database from you and will help you run your database with ease? Yes, I am talking about Amazon RDS or what we call Amazon's relational database service. And this is what we're going to discuss next. And welcome to RDS. And as I already told you, there is a service which can take all the headache of setting things and managing the database from you and will help you run your database with ease. Amazon relational database service or Amazon RDS makes it easy to set up, operate and scale a relational database over the cloud. And how does it help? It actually provides a cost-effective resizable capacity of database store while automating time-consuming administrative tasks such as hardware provisioning, database setup, patching, and backups. And Amazon RDS is available on several database instance types which are both optimized for memory and performance or I.O. 
And as you can see here, I have listed out all the familiar database engines that AWS RDS provides support for, which includes Amazon Aurora, which is the Amazon's proprietary database and PostgreSQL. You can use MySQL, MariaDB, Oracle and Microsoft SQL Server as well. And you can use the AWS database migration service uh, to easily migrate or replicate your existing database to Amazon RDS as well. So this option is also available to you. So I hope this was clear. Let's move on. So there are ways we can make sure we have our database set up and make use of it on AWS, isn't it? We can easily install one of them on the EC2 instance and get a readily available AMI that can give us the setup itself, isn't it? But if everything was green on the manual side, what was the need of having a service which would do all that for us? That's why we need to look into the benefits of using RDS over the ways we can set up a database using EC2 or AMI that we call. So the first point that we have here is AWS Managed DB. And with RDS, there is no need for infrastructure provisioning and no need for installing and maintaining database software. All of the underlying infrastructure is handled by AWS itself. You don't need to be worried about the physical aspects of it and you need to just focus on the data at hand and the way you use it. One thing that sets it apart from others is Amazon RDS database instances are pre-configured with parameters and that are set appropriately for the engine and class that you have selected and uh, you can launch a database instance and connect your application within minutes. Okay, so the second one that we have here is the ease of patching. So Amazon RDS will make sure that the relational database software that is powering your uh, deployment stays up to date with the latest patches. Uh, that is basically your operating system patches and you can exert operational control over when and if your database instance is patched so you can as well tell aws or uh, schedule a maintenance window where you want to have your database patched so you can tell amazon or aws that uh, this is the time period that i want my maintenance window to be there and uh, this is the time when i want my database to be patched so the third point that we have here is uh, the monitoring database and Amazon RDS provides Amazon CloudWatch matrix for your database instances at no additional charges so that you can use a CloudWatch to monitor your events and logs to make better decisions. And Amazon RDS also provides enhanced monitoring, which provides access to over 50 CPU, memory, file system and IO metrics or the disk IO metrics and performance insights. And, uh, and it also provides an easy to use tool that helps you quickly detect performance problems. And it's very good with monitoring and you need to remember this uh, for exam point of view as well. And the fourth one that we have here is scalability, which is one of the most important aspects of using RDS. So with AWS or cloud, we know that the thing that we always need is scalability. And here as well, you can scale the compute and memory resources powering your deployment up or down. Uh, up to a maximum of 32 vCPUs and 244 GB of RAM. So if you're using Amazon Aurora, the Amazon Aurora engine is uh, or will automatically grow the size of your database volume as your database storage needs grow uh, at, and up to a maximum of 64 terabytes or a maximum that uh, you can define. Uh, and the MySQL, MariaDB, Oracle and PostgreSQL engines allow you to scale up to 32 TB of storage and uh, SQL Server supports up to 16 TB. And this is something that you need to remember. And storage scaling is on the fly with zero downtime. And that's awesome, isn't it? So there is one more thing that we will discuss in length is read replicas. So read replicas in RDS makes it easy to elastically scale out beyond the capacity constraint of a single database instance for read heavy database workloads. You can create one or more replicas of the given source DB instance and serve high volume application read traffic from multiple copies of your data thereby increasing aggregate read throughput. And read replicas are available in Amazon RDS for MySQL, MariaDB, PostgreSQL, and Oracle, as well as the Amazon Aurora DB that we have. And the fifth point that we have here is security and AWS RDS provides encryption at rest and in transit. And RDS allows you to encrypt your databases using keys you manage through AWS key management service, that is a KMS. On a database instance running with Amazon RDS encryption, data stored at rest in the underlying storage is encrypted as uh, are its automated backups, replicas and the snapshots. And Amazon RDS supports uh, transparent data encryption that is a TDE in a SQL Server and Oracle for read. And Amazon RDS supports use of SSL to ensure there is a secure data or uh, to ensure security of data in transit.
So for the security of data at rest, you can always use the AWS Keys Management Service, that's a KMS, to encrypt the data that you have. And for security of data in transit, remember that you can use SSL. And with RDS, there, let's suppose you are working with a private firm and uh, that you want to have a database enclosed. And then AWS recommends that you run your database instance in the Amazon VPC, which allows you to isolate your database in your own virtual network and connect to your on-premise IT infrastructure using industry standard encrypted IPsec VPNs. Okay, so you can configure firewall settings and control network access to your database instances as well. So if you wish to, you can do that as well. And Sherry on top is basically the resource level permissions. So Amazon RDS is integrated with AWS Identity and Access Management, that's the IAM, and provides you the ability to control the actions that your AWS IAM users and groups can take on the specific Amazon RDS resources. So which could be your database instance, snapshot parameter groups, and option. So let's suppose you are a developer and you don't have access to the production system, then you can tag the resource with either developer or production based uh, on whom you want to provide the access. So you can tag the resources either with developer or production, and then you can tag them or attach them to the particular user that you have so that they have access to one of those on the basis of uh, the role that they play in the organization. And the sixth one that we have here is a hardware upgrade. So as RDS is AWS managed and uh, Amazon RDS will automatically replace the compute instance powering your deployment in the event of a hardware failure. So one less thing to worry about. That's great. So next thing that we have is probably one of the most important things is probably the most important one for the mission critical production systems. That's the disaster recovery. So with the multi-AZ deployment option that AWS RDS provides, you can run mission critical workloads with high availability and built-in automated failovers from your primary databases to a synchronously replicated secondary database. Okay, in this way, you can secure from those laps that might happen when there is a failure. As with all Amazon Web Services that we have seen, there are no upfront investments required and you pay only for the resources that you use. And the last thing that we have here for performance, I hope you remember the point we discussed about the storage classes with respect to the volumes. Here as well, RDS provides general purpose SSD storage and provision IOPS storage with GP2. As we know, Amazon RDS general purpose storage is an SSD backed storage option and it delivers a consistent baseline of three IOPS per provisioned GB and uh, provides the ability to burst up to 3000 IOPS above the baseline. And when we talk about the provisioned IOPS, so the Amazon RDS provisioned IOPS storage is an SSD backed storage option designed to deliver fast, predictable and consistent IO performance. So that's all we have for the benefits of using RDS over EC2 deployed database. So I hope that was clear. Let's move on. So the next thing that we have here is what is Amazon RDS read replication. So as we've already spoken in brief about read replicas, please focus on the next few minutes as this is a very important concept that RDS provides. And as a solution architect, you would need to have a proper understanding of it. Okay, so read replicas in RDS make it easy to elastically scale out beyond the capacity constraints of a single database instance for read heavy database workloads. So you can create one or more replicas of a given source DB instance and serve high volume application read traffic from multiple copies of your data, thereby increasing aggregate read throughput. So in simple terms, what it means is you can reduce the load on your source DB instance, that is your primary database, by routing read queries from your application to the read replica. Like let's suppose we have in our example here, let's suppose this is our application server, which let's assume is a very popular one. For the purpose of storing our data and reading or writing data, we have set up our RDS database, which can also be called as a primary database. Here. On our main primary DB instance, we make use of it for read and write. Okay, so let's suppose we have another part of our application which needs a huge amount of read operations. I hope you remember in a database we can perform CRUD operations and select is the operation or query that we use for reading the data from the database. So imagine your application actually needs a lot of read operations. Then to cope up with increasing demand, we can as well create a read replica that can be used for our application's read operations. And in a way, decreasing the load from the primary instance. That's the beauty of using RDS. And yes, it's very convenient as well. And uh, you might think, how does the read replica get the data to be read? So this is an asynchronous replication mechanism 
that lets data from the primary to be replicated across the read replicas. And if you think, bas itna hi, then read replicas can also be promoted when needed to become a standalone DB instance. So that is not dependent on the primary database replication to get the data. And one more thing that is really important for the exam and you need to remember this is you cannot have more than five read replicas and Amazon only allows you to create up to five read replicas and uh, need to be launched and they actually have to be launched one by one. So in the example, if you can see, we have our main application, which has a primary RDS database instance, and it works fine with read and write here. And uh, that's the read and write operation we have. But when it comes to our reporting server, which has a huge load of read operations, we have created our read replicas so that we don't overload our primary database instance. And one thing is that with asynchronous replication, there might be a slight delay in the data to be replicated across your DB instance. But this is simple, isn't it? As a solutions architect, knowledge is one thing to have, but on the same lines, you should be able to think of options that get or yield you optimal performance. And that comes along with having a proper thinking and a bit of common sense, isn't it? So I hope that was good. Let's move on. So let's go over uh, and let's discuss some of the important points that we need to remember for read replicas. So the first point that we have here is main purpose is scalability. As you know, that scalability is one of the major impacts that the read replicas provide us. And there is basically the use of asynchronous replication where the data will eventually get replicated across the instance that you have or the read replica that you have in a short time. And all read replicas are accessible but can be used for read scaling. Okay, and no backup is configured by default. Uh, we will discuss on how to create the backup in a short while. So you cannot have any backups that are configured by default. So you have to manually configure them. And it can be within an availability zone, cross availability zone or cross region. So you can have availability zone. So you can have a read replicas across availability zones and uh, across cross regions as well or different regions as well. And for non Aurora databases, uh, the uh, database engine upgrade is independent from the source instance and for all Aurora databases, it is updated together. So the read replicas can be manually promoted to a standalone database instance, as I already told you, for the non-Aurora one or to be the primary instance in case you're using Aurora. Okay, so if suppose in the exam it comes like which can be promoted to a standalone database instance and which one cannot be or which one can be promoted to a primary instance, you must remember that the standalone database instance or the promotion to a standalone database instance is for the non Aurora databases. And the one that can be promoted to a primary instance is basically your Aurora database or the Aurora RDS database. Okay, let's move on. Okay, just now we had a discussion about the read replication on single channel. And let's suppose our database instance crashes or the server gets destroyed, we must have something that can help us save our critical application so that it has a high availability and high uptime. So AWS RDS provides you read replicas and with that it also provides multi AZ read replicas. Yes, you can create or set your read replicas across availability zones. Amazon RDS multi AZ deployments provide enhanced ability and durability for RDS database instances, making them a natural fit for production database workloads. When you provision a multi AZ DB instance, Amazon RDS automatically creates a primary database and synchronously replicates the data to a standby instance in a different availability zone. Okay, so the benefit you get is each availability zone runs on its own physically distinct independent hardware and is engineered to be highly reliable. And in case of an infrastructure failure, the Amazon RDS performs an automatic failover to the standby or to the replica, the read replica that we have. And one of the beautiful things that we have here is since the endpoint of your database remains the same after the failover, your application can resume database operation without the need for manual administrative intervention. So let's suppose there was a DB instance and it failed over and along with that the URL or the endpoint got changed. Then you have to manually configure the database again or the configuration files that you have again uh, for all the properties that you have mentioned in the instances that are particularly accessing it. So basically this is one of the very good features that we have that the DB instance remains the same or the endpoint for your DB instance remains the same after the failover so that your application can resume database operations without any external modification. So here, if we see visually, we get the understanding that our application server uses our AWS RDS instance 
and which is in our AP South 1A availability zone and our read replica is in AP South 1B and they are connected or replicated using our synchronous approach of read replication and if you can see there is a DNS auto failover condition set and then at the failover point it will read from the standby node that is in the other read replica. So let's see what conditions can provoke the failover and uh, what can be done about it. So what I'm going to say here is really important. Listen to this very carefully. On instance failover or instance failure in Amazon Aurora deployments, Amazon RDS uses RDS multi-AZ technology to automate failover to one of up to 15 Amazon Aurora replicas you have created in any of the three availability zones. If no Amazon Aurora replicas have been provisioned, in the case of failure, Amazon RDS will attempt to create a new Amazon Aurora DB instance for you automatically. Here, if you assume that there was an issue and our database instance got crashed, then upon a failover, RDS will automatically launch a DB instance for you. When we try and understand it visually, what happens here is, if you can see, we have our application in at AP South 1A AZ and there was a failover. And how does RDS know that there is a failover? So DB instance failover is fully automatic and requires no administrative intervention. And Amazon RDS monitors the health of your primary and the standbys and initiates a failover automatically in response to a variety of failure conditions that are set. Okay, so you need to understand that when you have your multi-AZ read replica, you set your read replicas in place. And when it fails, as you can see, it will switch to the second instance in another availability zone, that is our AP South 1B, which becomes our primary RDS and will point to the standby instance as its read replica. So Amazon automatically performs a failover in the event of any one of the following cases that we have. The first point is loss of availability in the primary availability zone. So if the primary availability zone gets obstructed or it's no longer connected, then it is one of the conditions for a failover. And the second point that we have is loss of net network connectivity to the primary. As I already told you, if there is any problem with the network or anything that is not able to connect to the primary, then it will automatically fail over. And the third point that we have here is compute unit failure on primary. And the fourth one, the storage failure. Let's suppose there is no storage capacity left, it will try to fail over. And when operations such as DB instance scaling or system upgrades like OS patching are initiated for multi-AZ deployments, listen to this carefully, for enhanced availability, they are first applied on the standby prior to an automatic failure. So they are first applied to the standby, then to the primary one. So this is really important because so the exam can trick you into asking questions like on which one actually it does apply first. So you have to remember that the OS patching and the system upgrades are applied to the standby prior to doing it on the primary one. Okay, I hope it was clear. Let's move on.